On this week's episode, can the Kingsman capture the feel of the Kingsman? Could Black Adam end up being the biggest hero in the DC Universe? And is The Undertaker actually retiring? All this and more as we once again delve into the pop culture cosmos. Welcome to the Pop Culture Cosmos. And we're back with another episode of the Pop Culture Cosmos. My name is Gerald Glassford from Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, the Lakers Fast Break, and of course, Game Source. We really appreciate everyone listening to all of our great shows. And if you get a chance, please give us that 555 star review. Truly appreciate Bill giving us that five-star review on Apple Podcasts this past weekend. So we truly appreciate him doing that. And thank you for anybody else that goes ahead and gives us that five-star review for any one of our shows right here at the Pop Culture Cosmos. But it wouldn't be a Pop Culture Cosmos without my good friend. He is our own King's Man of Pop Culture Cosmos. You got to check out what he's doing today at popculturecosmos.com. Also, his great show, Topic Topicocalypse, and the Super BS Gamescast, and also as well as great book, Congratulations, You Suck. It is my good friend. It is Josh Peterson. Well, almost the 200th time, man. That's coming up next week. What's up, man? Hey, hey, yeah, getting close to 200 episodes. It's, uh, it's been a ride, and, uh, you know, thanks to everyone who has listened thus far. Well, we're going to go ahead and, again, have a big, hopeful celebration with all that good stuff coming up next week because we'll be 200 episodes strong next week, and we're just so thrilled about that. Plus, all the great stuff that's going on there, we'll go ahead and then announce maybe some good stuff that we'll be talking about for next week's show coming up on our social media at Pop Culture Cosmos, or maybe hear from you guys. What do you want us to talk about in our 200th episode? We'll go ahead and see if we can get some feelers out there from you. Plus, also is what we got on today's show. Got some great things going on, including talking about The King's Man, which is coming out in September. They just dropped their second trailer out this weekend, so we want to go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Our thoughts on it as far as the hopes we have for it matching up to the success of the previous two King's Men movies. So we want to go ahead and talk about that because this is an origin story for it, so we do have some thoughts on that. Plus, also as well, we're going to be talking about Black Adam. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he went ahead and announced that there's going to be a lot of info coming up on the way for Black Adam at DC's event. So it is a a thing that's a go production and all that's getting started, filming and all that. I want to talk about if Black Adam and the power of rock right now in Hollywood, is this movie going to be bigger than anything DC has done before? And where can they go with the Black Adam character from here? We're going to talk about that as well. Coming up, there's also a, on Monday, as you're watching this, Apple will have an event with a lot of its developers, and it's a special internet press conference. We're going to talk about that real quickly. And Josh, as an Apple user, want to go ahead and ask him exactly what he would be hoping for from this conference, not only as far as the latest iOS and things of that nature, but... A little bit more, because they now have a platform for it right here coming up this week. And then last but not least, we've got a couple other things to talk about, including The Undertaker says on his Last Ride docuseries that he's done, that he is retiring. Well, we're going to go ahead and talk about that possibility and see if that's going to be the case coming up later in the program as well. And our top 100-ish movie countdown we're going to go ahead and count down the 40 to 49 slots right there for you as well and john griffin from variety digital radio australia he's going to stop by with talking about a little bit about what he likes in pop culture what he's interested in and what what he's really liking out there in the world of pop culture as well pack show my friend but i want to get it start off with this the king's man dropped a trailer this past weekend Looks pretty good. It's actually, uh, I want to say a prequel because it, it details the origin story of the whole, how the, the Kingsmen were actually formed and all that based out of World War I against an organization of evil villains trying to go ahead and, and you know, disrupt the world as far as World War I is concerned and, and how they're going to profit from it. 
and it's up to the king's man or Ray Fiennes and Jimon Honsu is also going to be a part of it as well one of my favorite actors out there so I ask you my friend I really like now this second trailer that dropped for the king's man and I'm now excited for it to come out in September how about you man are you still excited for this king's man type of movie yeah I, I mean I just watched the trailer I I gotta be honest man I love Ralph Fiennes you get so wrapped up in it you know i'm i'm currently going back through the harry potter films and like just seeing him as Voldemort, like he is so menacing and you hate him but at the same time you like you pity him you know and the same thing with uh seeing him play the male version of m in 007 i don't know there's just something about his acting that it just it's immersive i don't know what it is but like i am you know just seeing him in that trailer i am i'm stoked for this film I'm really excited for this film as well. I hope it, it generates that same kind of enthusiasm that the first two Kingsmen, especially the original Kingsman movie made. I know that is something that a lot of people were looking at as far as the Kingsman Golden Circle did okay. It did actually almost right around the same that the original Kingsman movie did, which isn't exactly what you're hoping for as a studio. You always want it to go above and beyond, but it did right around the same amount dollar-wise, so it was something that this movie studio still wanted to go ahead and green lit uh, for another movie. And this is an interesting turn, and with the theater situation still up in the air, the coronavirus still out there, and the movie attendance that could still be staying away, it's going to be interesting to see how well this movie performs when it comes out in September. So I'm interested to see how that develops. But as a movie, I'm excited and hopeful that this movie gets a chance with audiences to prove itself. Do you think that the King's Man can hold itself up really well in establishing the King's Men tradition for movies and that it can extend this series including maybe another edition of the Kingsman movie, because I don't think they're done when it comes to the Kingsman in the modern times as far as making more movies within that type of franchise. I don't know. It's 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 a it's an interesting time piece, you know, to to say the least. I this is my, my one issue with um you know, I love a good story revolving around World War One or World War Two, but like I just I don't know. I, I I kind of have this issue with like making light of that era, just because you know I've seen I've seen a lot of documentaries that maybe really like feel for a lot of the people that were participating in that. But you know, other than that, like I think that it's an interesting timepiece, and I think that you know using Rasputin as a bad guy is is uh, it's not necessarily original, but like it just seeing who plays Rasputin. I think I feel like I recognize that actor. I'm going to check that out right now, but while I'm checking this out right now for everybody out there, I want to know your thoughts on, once we get done with The King's Man, if you really want to go back into the modern times with The King's Man and see that evolve forward. You know, there was the, the troop and Jeff Bridges heading it up. I would have loved to see that troop get their own movie, and maybe that's a possibility as well. And then you could go back to the, the original King's Men. Yeah, I mean, it's there from what I understand like there's still something in production that's supposed to feature Channing Tatum and Jeff Bridges and them, but yeah, I I don't know, there's just something about like the the elegance of the Kingsman franchise, the elegance of the, you know, the action scenes and stuff. It's like it's it's hard not to want to watch it, you know, whereas like the I forget what the guy with the American branch from Kingsman 2 is called, but you know, there's the I I'm less inclined to see a movie about their, those characters and more inclined to see something revolving around, you know, the UK. So it, it's, it, I think that there's an audience for everything, but I would not be like really stoked on seeing that side of the Kingsman franchise. I mean, and that's a shame because I would kind of like to see it because it's the exact opposite of the refinement and the dignity that the Kingsmen uphold. And just as a, you know, like we're doing something different now in a prequel with The King's Man, I would just love to see something in that realm just once to show it out there. I think it'd be kind of different. Then you could go back to The King's Men franchise and go and have another one, two episodes. And that would really put it out to where you have six films in the process. I think that the, the characters that were set up in The King's Men Golden Circle for that type of American 
style franchise, I think that would actually work on a one-time basis. I wouldn't say going ahead and branching it off into a series or franchise of its own. But let me ask you this, though. Do you think that people are, if they know something's going to be a one-off, do you think they're willing to really invest in that these days? Especially, like, this is the era of franchises. So, I don't know. I feel like it, it's... I mean, it's still it's connected. It's still connected. It's still connected. True, it's still connected, but I... but. Nothing is like officially a one-off ever, though. Like if this, if the movie went in, and it did really well. Like they would wouldn't be able to help themselves, and they would make a sequel, and then would that take away the, from the quality of the other films? It, it's a it's a messy proposition. It is a messy proposition. By the way, it's Reese Ifans. I I thought it was somebody else as far as the the Rasputin character uh, was being. Yeah, played I might have thought so too. I, I don't recognize that yeah. name. What? Off the IMDb. Uh, but anyways, I just wanted to go ahead and say that I think there is a future for this franchise. I know Josh wants to keep it on the straight and narrow with the Kingsmen. I'd like to see them give the American branch at least one movie, at least one shot to go ahead and and with Channing Tatum and Jeff Bridges and Halle Berry. Just give them one shot to do it because I think that would be entertaining. But it, And then you could go back, like I said, after that to create more movies in the modern Kingsman universe. But Either which way, it's still something very interesting we'd like to see. And then once again, that's the King's Man, which is going to originate this whole Kingsman universe. And that's coming out in, in September. Josh and I are excited for that movie. And we'd love to see what happens then, how the King's Man is seen as originating. Are you as excited for the King's Man as the King's Men? Share us your thoughts. PopCultureCosmos at Yahoo.com. Also swell Pop Culture Cosmos, Humanity Media, and Game Source on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. For the latest news and information, analysis, and opinions on the Los Angeles Lakers and the NBA, check out the Lakers Fast Break podcast today on wherever you get your podcasts. Well, my friend... Black Adam. Wait, hold on. Can I just interrupt you? Reese E. Fans is the guy that played Dr. Connors in Amazing Spider-Man, just so everyone knows. Okay, in Amazing Spider-Man, not not the original Spider-Man movies. No, no, the Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, that's, that gonna... that's, that's where I recognize them from. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. But just want to give everybody a heads up. Black Adam. That movie's going to production. That movie's going to start filming. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has said he's got a lot to talk about at the upcoming August DC Fandom event that's going to take place August 22nd. And I want to correct myself. I thought it was August 22nd, 26th. It's actually going to be like a 24-hour thing on August 22nd. So it's going to be a round-the-clock type deal for DC fans everywhere on August 22nd. So I want to ask you this. I mean, this is probably the biggest heavyweight actor that they have brought into this DC universe in this modern DC realm. I want to ask you, my friend, that this could end up being the biggest get for them and could potentially even be the biggest drawing movie of the entire lot and have Black Adam be at the forefront of the DC series, which is kind of different because you would normally have, let's say, Superman or Wonder Woman or Aquaman like you do right now. But Black Adam could just like be the one people want to see the most. I want to hear your thoughts on the Black Adam movie. Do you think it has the potential to be just that? Because right now, I mean, the way it's positioned, it's positioned as an offshoot of Shazam 2 or Shazam itself. I think it can be that and so much more, especially with The Rock leading the way. You know, like I, I it's hard for me to say this, but I, I disagree just because I, I know, I think that, yeah, the, he can be big, like he can be a temple character, but I don't think that he's, even with The the Rock, I, I don't think that the, the Black Adam is, he's just not a big enough character to like lead the Justice League or something like that. So, I mean, it, it's, I don't it's I guess it's an I don't the the modern film market is so unpredictable but like Black Adam's a bad guy you know and I'm like I'm trying to figure out how they're going to spin that when it comes to him because I know he's going to end up being it's going to be an anti-hero he'll be like a venom or something like that and it's it's 
I'm having a hard time picturing what this is going to look like. I don't see him leading the Justice League, though. You know, maybe he will be featured. He'll be part of it. And the people will be drawn kind of in the same way that they brought The Rock into the Fast and the Furious franchise. But I don't see him being like the big, the new Superman, you know, and that just is that might just be me, though. So I, I don't you know, audiences might say something different, but I don't the, the character is not established enough you know and it's like we've talked about this before you you don't put all your eggs in baskets that don't but you don't it's you don't establish other characters to be these huge characters before you work on your big five you know and they they did a man of steel movie i don't know what's going on with the batman film if that's connected or not but I, there there are other areas where they need to work on things before they start pushing something to be like the the next big thing well, the Batman movie is not going to be associated with anything in the Justice League. That's going to be its own separate thing because it takes place uh, decades ago. But it's still going to be its own separate thing, which is kind of difficult yeah, to explain it, because you've got Wonder Woman 1984 mm-hmm. that's coming out. Right, right. But it's it's supposed to be what, what they're saying, uh, its own separate entity. Same thing with Joker and all that. And then they have all this what's going on. And then now people are excited again because of the Snyder Cut and – Hopefully, like you and I, fans like you and I are hoping that this will lead to a DC overarching story. Once again, it's a true universe that you, instead of just a side story, side story, which is great. All these movies have been a lot of fun to watch lately from the DC and Warner Brothers and all that. But it's something that we want more of. We want more. We want, I want that story to culminate in a reason why, why we are investing in all these DC movies. Uh, I mean, that's something we've talked about before a couple of weeks ago. So... I'm hoping that Black Adam can can fit into that. But you're right. Black Adam's character is normally a bad guy or thought of as a bad guy. I know that he has uh, said that he wanted to go ahead and had Henry Cavill as Superman make an appearance. So that would be probably a battle between the two. But where does that leave as far as a Black Adam character going forward? I just think with the rock star power and how you want to go ahead and portray his character – could be a little bit different than the way you portray it in the comic books. Yes, I understand it could be very much an anti-hero. Yes, I understand that it was alluded to in the Shazam movie that it was an anti-hero or even a full all-out all out bad guy. But with the rock star power, I mean, you really don't want to go ahead and keep him as a bad guy forever because, uh, you know, he has just such great drawing power. He, he He's just such a likable individual in real life. And most of his characters that he's played on screen, yes, I understand that he, he was back and forth on good guy, bad guy, but everybody seemed to love him when he was with the WWE, uh, you know, either which way he was going. That it just, to me, I wouldn't want to blow it with him as as the lead character of such a potential opportunity to grow the series and grow the universe even more. So, I mean, I'm not disagreeing in the fact that he has star power. I definitely think that he can draw crowds to the movies. You know, that's why I was saying put him in Justice League, but don't don't diminish Superman, you know, if that makes sense. Don't diminish Superman and Batman just because you have The Rock. And you know, that also leads me to another question of can The Rock sustain the the tone that the DCU is going for, you know, that dark tone that matches up with with what Zack Snyder's been doing or is might continue to do who knows but I mean you know the rock is somebody who kids now are not kids but fans in general associate him with like oh hey he's funny sometimes you know and it's it's a it it does is it going to contradict the the tone the the darkness of it and uh I don't know it's just I'm I'm interested I'm completely fascinated with how that's going to work but uh I just I don't see I wouldn't want, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, I wouldn't want him to make Batman or Superman a background character while he takes charge. Who knows uh, what's going to happen. Uh, I'd just like to see him a bigger part of this universe. I know that because I'm, I'm a huge fan of The Rock, so I would love to see him uh, in a light where he's not leading the Injustice Society. I would love to see him part of the Justice Society and the Justice League and all that, and and be part of, instead of the Hall of Villains, like, you know, I know his character in the comic books might be portrayed as. I would love to see him become a hero and be someone that the DC Universe and Warner Brothers, which we've, you know, you and I have gone over back and forth over the years and, and criticized them for a lot of things. 
they have the chance and the opportunity now to build this character and make it so that, it, yeah, it will deviate from the comic books, but I think it could deviate in a way that's positive and it shows out there that you could put him out of the forefront as a superstar. And yeah, I understand that, that putting him above Superman and the traditional heroes, uh, or at least at their level or above, might be an issue with some people out there, but the DC Universe, especially with after the Batman v Superman, Man of Steel were so disappointing to a lot of people, and the Justice League, for that matter, were so disappointing to a lot of people. Maybe a change is needed. Maybe a change that might go ahead and, and you know, even give more life to the momentum that they already have built with Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Yeah, I mean, I I agree, but you know, again, like I wouldn't want to see him be the tentpole of the universe. I wouldn't want to see him be the the foundation that they're relying so much on you know i think that the snyder cut's going to do great things for them moving forward but i just i i wouldn't want to see shazam i mean grant i haven't seen the movie yet but i wouldn't want to see black adam at the front of it just because i i do like superman you know i do like batman i like those characters well enough to not see them get you know pushed to the side well, I wouldn't say they would get pushed to the side, but I would say it would be really cool to have Black Adam out in the forefront, especially if it's Rock in that character, because again, he's you know he's just done such a great job with a lot of movies out there that he's been part of. That he's such an entertaining actor, and I think a lot of people right now are really digging the fact that he's going to be a part of the DC universe going forward. What are your thoughts out there on? Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Black Adam appearance coming up in August. What do you think he's going to announce? What do you think he's going to talk about? And also, the future of the Black Adam character. We'd love to hear your thoughts. PopCultureCosmos at Yahoo.com Before we head to the break, my friend, and also going ahead and talking to John Griffin from Variety Digital Radio, I want to go ahead real quickly. There's a developers conference tomorrow, or at the, today as you're listening to this, if you're on your our Pop Culture Cosmos channel or wherever you get your podcasts or radio stations that are out there, I want to go ahead and talk about this week that Apple is dropping a conference for developers as it does every year, and it's going to be done over the internet, and you can watch it and all that. My question to you is, yes, while it will talk about all the different iOSs and updates and software fixes and all those things that a lot of people in the development community can talk about, I see it because of the the way they've been going ahead and portraying it and, and advertising it as a way they can go ahead and promote some of the great things, not necessarily new devices. They could. They could put, throw out a new phone. They could throw out a new watch. That's great. But a, as a great way to go ahead and talk about a lot of things that they want to do with Apple Plus, which I think is still very much in limbo at this point in time as far as a paid TV service. Your thoughts on what you want to see from a developer's conference, or at least a platform for Apple. What do you want to see as far as products or any announcement that you'd love to see from Apple at this point in time? I don't know. I'd like to see more interconnectivity between Apple and, you know, when I turn on my Xbox, I would love to see, you know, have an Apple TV app because I have it on my phone, yeah, and but I don't own an Apple TV. Like, why? I, I don't have any desire to spend, you know, a hundred plus dollars on something that I plug into my computer that will stream to my TV. Granted, I can do the, I can connect to my computer from my TV now, but I would love to just have an app, love to have access to that on whether it's on Xbox or PS4, or whatever it might be. I would love to just have that access, you know. And as for like Apple, Apple Plus, Apple TV, whatever it's called, I. I, I don't know. Like there has been not the, I haven't seen a lot of shows on there marketed to the point where I'm like, I want to watch that. And it's, it's it, really, if that, if I'm going to sub, you know, subscribe to another streaming service, like I, I need that. I need it to be, I need to see something that I want to watch. You know, I haven't, it, it almost, it feels like this service has disappeared since it was first announced. Uh, pretty much so. I mean, outside of what the Chris Evans movie that just came out on the service that a lot of people are giving him praise over and a lot of people are saying it's, it's really good and one of the best things on it, they really don't have the content that they've been force feeding you with to show you that, hey, we've got all this stuff out there. Come on over because I don't see that much in the way of a lot of things that need to be there. As far as Apple Plus is concerned, meanwhile, you have HBO Max that's trying to throw everything in the kitchen sink at you. 
You have Disney Plus that's trying to throw as much as they can as far as even with the, the stuff that's being backed up by the coronavirus. They're still trying to throw content out there at you. They're even throwing movies that are out there that are coming uh, instead of theaters right straight to Disney Plus. Netflix, of course, you know, throws everything and the kitchen sink at you as well. So with all this going on, plus all these other channels that are out there, Apple, with so much spending power at their leisure, they've got so much in the way of cash. And don't tell me they don't, because they do. They're one of the richest companies on the face of the planet. And not, that's not even including Amazon Prime with what they can show out at you. I mean, Apple needs to do more with Apple Plus, because I think right now it's what we were talking about originally with Amazon Prime, and it's just some little side thing. For Amazon, that's what we were talking about three years ago. Before they finally started to look more into it, I mean, Amazon Prime is a much bigger player now because of they they've really decided to go ahead and put more emphasis on putting quality shows on there and a lot of quality shows. Apple Plus needs to go ahead and do the same thing and need to do it sooner rather than later. Yeah, Apple Plus to me is like you know when you're a kid and you have this really cool video game and you invite kids over to play and you're like that's really cool, but don't tell anybody I have this. And so nobody knows about it. You know, that that's what I feel like Apple plus has done with their marketing. It's like, Hey, we have, we have a TV streaming service. You know, they had that big conference. We have a TV streaming service. We have a video game service. And then three months later, I don't know anything about it. You know, and I know st- Google's still like shamelessly pushing stadia and they'll do that until it finally just dies. But they're trying it, to give it away free now. Yeah. Right, right. And so it's just, I I don't know. I feel like Apple got involved. It's either a marketing problem or they got involved in markets where, not markets, but, you know, areas where they just don't have the power to do it or people just aren't interested in what they're providing. They just seem to get sidetracked. They're like this little kid with a lot of toys. Oh, I've got this toy. I've got this really cool Apple Plus toy. I'm really going to do a lot of things with it. Oh, wait, there. what is this over here? I really like That's cool. Okay, these phones, man. I really sell a lot lots of them. Of, lots of squirrels running around there. Yeah, so it's just like, you know, you've got the cash. Don't tell me you can't go ahead and do a lot more for users out there. And you can make – I mean, we talk, I talked a long time ago, and you hear it on our promos about what Rob McCallum said when he first caught wind of – what was going our, our friend Rob McCallum director of so many different documentaries that he's done such a great job with and you hear all that as far as what's going on and he said at the time he thought it could change the way we look at consumption you know as far as video is concerned and he really thought they would make a big splash and they have yet to do so in my opinion so I'm hopeful that we can go ahead and say differently a year from now with Apple Plus, but I'm not sure because they can they pay enough attention to it? We'll have to wait and see. But I would use this developers conference that is taking place as you hear this, most likely, that it's just it's something that they're probably not going to end up doing, but I really think they use it as a platform because they've spent so much time advertising it already. Yeah, I mean they might as well. Apple is there. Let's let's be honest. Like they're they're stagnant. You know, and it's funny that they're. I'm curious how their market is going to be, especially with all the COVID stuff. And after all that, like, do people still have the money to be like, oh my gosh, there's a new iPhone or a new iPad. I want to just go and spend everything I have on this immediately, so I can say I have it. You know, and it's like, are the days of iPhone shaming over? The days where people be like, this guy. Oh, yeah, I got an iPhone 11. This guy's got an iPhone 6. Like, do you think that those days are over because people are, you know, if we basically with COVID, like we faced a, a modern depression of sorts. Galaxy all the way for me, my friend. Galaxy all the way for me. Android, baby. I just want them to bring back the Razor. There you go. What are your thoughts out there on Apple's conference that's taking place this week or most likely has taken place by the time you hear this, whether you're hearing this on radio or on our Pop Culture Cosmos channel? Is it something that you want them to use as a bigger platform for all the great stuff that's going on in Apple, including Apple Plus, Apple Podcasts, Apple Music, you know, Apple everything? Would you love to hear more than just what you have now from the Apple I guess, consortium, the Apple monopoly, the Apple, whatever you want to call it. Are you happy with where they're at or do you want more from Apple? 
Share us your thoughts, popculturecosmos at yahoo.com. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. Don't touch that dial. Wait, do, do people still use dials? Coming soon, Zero Cool Films presents Action Figure Adventure. Super collector Jay Bartlett hits the road once again in search of action figures, most iconic and noteworthy and rare figures, all in the name of creating the most ultimate action figure auction ever. He fronts the cash that charity benefits in the end. What will he get? How will he get it? And how well will he do? Find out November 1st, 2020. All right, and we're back with the show. It's the Pop Culture Cosmos. It's Gerald coming right back at you here. And I'll tell you what, you know, I understand with all the stuff that's going on in our lives and, and all the things that are that are out there. And But still, a lot of people out there look to pop culture as a way to escape, but also as a way to entertain themselves during these troubled times. And here today to talk to me about some great things going on that he's looking forward to in pop culture is one of the stars of an awesome radio station in Australia. If you haven't checked out already, it plays worldwide. And that's available at varietydigitalradio.com.au. It is Variety Digital Radio Australia. In fact, you can not only get it at that website, but you can also get it today on Apple TV, Google Home Mini, MyTuner, TuneIn, Google Play, wherever you basically you get your internet radio, you can get it today. It is Variety Digital Radio. And again, one of the stars is the man right now I'm talking to, and that is John Griffin. And John, thanks for coming on the program today. Oh, my pleasure, Gerald. How are you today? I'm doing well here in Vegas, and I hope you're doing well in Australia. I mean, before we get into all the great things that are going on with your station and why people need to check it out from all around the world, because you have listeners from all around the world listening to your station, and you were so great to tell me about all the people and all the different countries that you that hear your shows I want to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about pop culture as far as some of the things that you're looking forward to, because I know you're a pop culture fan. I know pretty much everybody likes something, whether it's movies, television, something from some avenue of pop culture. And there's, you know, I, I know there's a lot of stuff changing around as far as release dates and all that. But as a pop culture fan, what are you looking forward to coming in the not too distant future for pop culture? Oh, mate, once again, uh, thank you for letting me uh, be on Pop Culture Cosmos right now. Now, I'm really looking forward, Gerald, uh, to number one, the PlayStation 5 that's going to be coming out. Like, that looks exciting. I can't wait for that because I've already got the VR thing for PlayStation 4 Pro. I don't have normal PlayStation 4. I've got the Pro. I'm hoping that that VR works for the uh, new one, which I've been told it does. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There was no but, way they would uh, Sony would shoot themselves in the foot like that, pardon the pun, by going ahead and make it not accessible to the PlayStation 5. No price as of yet, no release date as of yet, but I'm going to tell you, 37 different games were debuted as going to be on that system at some point in time. A lot of people are excited about it. The design, I think, is a little bit up in arms, whether people are liking it or not liking it. But whether you want an all-digital system or you want a system with a Blu-ray player attached to it, I'm actually, when I get one, I want to get one with the Blu-ray player put in. How it. much do you think, like in American dollars, so obviously we're in Australia here, but how much do you think it's going to be? I've been told the rumor going around is over $1,000 Australian. Um, I'm going to tell you, in American dollars, they shot themselves with the PlayStation 3 when they went as six and 700 U.S. dollars. I'm going to tell you right now, they got off to such a bad start because they priced themselves out of what their consumers were really wanted to pay for. It. And it wasn't until they dropped the price that they really saw the gains worldwide on that system. It cannot be any more expensive than 500 I'm guessing if you can do a 400 out of it, and I'm, I'm going to assume that the digital version possibly will be in that $400 US dollar range. Well, in Australian, like, so that sounds like same as like the PS4 Pro with the uh, headset when that came out. So I think I paid about 900 Australian dollars for that when it all came out. So uh, probably around that same price. It has to be, to, in my opinion. When they introduced the digital format, I think that's their way of saying we're going to sneak into that $400 barrier. I mean, it, I'm hoping that that's the case. It would be very wise of them to do so. It is, of the two between that and the Xbox Series X, slightly less powerful. But still, you saw the games already that were introduced as far as that's going to eventually be on that system. And a lot of these games are really pushing the context of what you can do with a video game. 
Well, see, I first ever bought the VR because I was waiting for that Ace Combat game and it didn't come out for years later after I bought the VR. And I tell you what, I was like a little kid in the candy store when that game came out because it is amazing graphics. Like I even play it, even though I finished it, clocked it uh, now. But uh, no, I still, some nights when I've had a few beers, I'll sit there and just take the flight <laughs> for a free flight and off I go. And it's just relaxing up there in the sky because it feels like you're actually up there. And the Amazing. Ace Combat series has really been a long-running, very successful series. Somewhat under the radar, but it has a, a large following. A large enough following, like you said, when it transitioned it over to the VR, that made it even more special. So uh, also with the movies, I'm a little bit like during the uh, COVID-19, as you know, that's happening all around the world. I've noticed on Netflix and that sort of thing, they're doing some early releases, but there's not much worth watching because it seems like very, not even B-grade, it seems very D-grade. Like it's some editor sitting in his bedroom editing all these TV shows and making us try to watch it, and some of it's just crap. But I'm liking that space show with Steve Carell in it because I love space him Force. out of the office. Yeah, Space Force. I love that show. That's a, that's a funny show. And I think there was only 10 episodes, so I finished that. I'll tell you what, though, with Netflix, it's all about how much content they that they can put out there as opposed to maybe pick and choosing which kind. They're more interested as far as putting everything they can out there. Some stuff is really good quality. Some of the stuff is really eh, maybe suspect and whatnot. But they're really trying to get people to, to watch because of the fact that there's so much that they're throwing on the actual streaming platform at this point in time. There's a few shows on there that I like, and there's a lot of Aussie shows on there that I um, get. Do you guys get the Australian shows over there, like on the Netflix? Or and some, some of we do. We get do we do get some of them. Yes. So it has like a category saying Australian shows because here we get it has a category saying Aussie shows. Uh, I know some of the Korean shows that that uh, my wife has been watching. Some of the Australian shows that that are out there. You in a search, it usually does come up very quickly, and, and I know that Netflix loves to give you a taste from different aspects of shows all around the world because they know that people all around the world are still following maybe you know from the perspective areas that they're from that they go ahead like to go ahead and take a look at that some of the stuff from canada some of the stuff from all over the world that actually goes ahead and it appears on netflix yeah they do go ahead and distribute that worldwide on many occasions yeah well there you go so have you got any questions for me gerald Absolutely. What were some of the movies that you were really into when it comes to Marvel? Were you into some of the Star Wars? What were some of the things that you were into before this COVID hit? See, the only Marvel stuff I really like is uh, obviously Spider-Man and what was that other one? See, Endgame I didn't quite get. I didn't get to watch the whole thing. So when I went to watch the new Spider-Man Homecoming, I was saying to one of my mates, what's going on? I had no idea what's going on, right? I like the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I love that. That's hilarious. And the, and the music soundtrack, as you know, I run a radio station here, and the music soundtrack in that is amazing. Before COVID-19, I was loving... Um, the Terminator movie, that was fantastic. That actually, out of all the movies, when that came out, either was it this year? Yeah, this year, I think I watched it. But out of all the movies that I've watched, that had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. So, and I was sitting there going, when's Arnie coming out? I didn't understand, but he, yeah, he was in there. <laughs> yes, he so, was. Yes. Hopefully that they'll go ahead and, and continue or revive the Terminator franchise once again, even though Dark Fate didn't do as well as expected. I'm hoping that there will be an extension of that going forward. But before we head on out and before we talk to your great stuff that's going on with Variety Digital Radio, I want to ask, as someone who runs a radio station, what are some of the music is, is that's really popular or really resonating with Australians right at this point in time? Well, uh, as you know, we had a uh, terrible bushfires here in Australia not long ago. So we in Australia, we put on a, a huge concert that went – I think it was the first time in, in like world history where a concert started in the morning and it went right until midnight that night and it was all Aussie artists. Uh, actually, Queen came down. So Queen came down to Australia and um, did a performance for the bushfires. So at the moment, we, we have a lot of American influence, obviously, with our um, top 10, with Aussie music. We obviously, we always like our own music. With the uh, radio station, we play music from the 70s till now with Aussie music. Because of COVID-19, a lot of artists haven't been making money and that sort of thing. So the more music we play down under, the more that goes to the copyright people who hopefully pay the artists. So that's how I'm sort of working it. 
And that's a great thing to hear that you're doing for the great people of Australia and the great artists that perform and that are from Australia. That's great to see that you're doing that for them. And before we head on out, where are you doing it from? You know, I said so many great things at the beginning of the interview regarding Variety Digital Radio, but please, as the guy who is the main force behind Variety Digital Radio, you got to tell people why Variety Digital Radio is the place to go for some great music and so much more. Oh, mate, the reason why you should, everybody should listen to Variety Digital Radio Australia is because of that, that right in the name there, Variety. We're not just like the normal commercial stations or community stations where they play a song and say, this is that song, this is that song, because that bores the hell out of me. We are like, we got so many variety of shows. We're also 24 7, and you can get us on PlayStation 4, Google Home, Xbox One, so all those places. So if you want to ever listen, just head to varietydigitalradio.com.au. And, uh, yeah, you can listen to all our fantastic shows. And speaking of that, I actually have to go in a moment because we've got news coming up. So all right. <laughs> being the boss of a radio station, you never get to actually sit down and relax. So, Gerald, never become a boss of a station. I hear you. Sounds like it's quite busy for you. But I know a lot of good things that are coming out of your radio station always. So people need to check it out today at Variety Digital Radio, wherever you get your Internet radio. Fantastic. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, Thank you so much again, John, for taking the time to speak to me. I hope to hear from you soon right here on the Pop Culture Cosmos. If you need your video game fix, be sure to check out Retro City Games. Located in Town Square on Las Vegas Boulevard or in Henderson, Nevada, Retro City Games has the cure for all your video game vices. Retro games and games for current consoles, Nintendo, Sega, PlayStation, Xbox, and more. Retro City Games has all the staples from any library, and some highly collectible offerings too. So pick up a few games today at Retro City Games in Town Square on Las Vegas Boulevard or in Henderson, Nevada. Retro City Games is your video game metropolis. It's time to go ahead and continue our countdown of the top 100-ish movie countdown that we're doing. These were all movies that were voted on by our fans and followers and listeners out there on the Pop Culture Cosmos. They got together their top 10 lists, and we combined them. We go ahead and counted down. We did point values for each of them, da 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 We're doing it also as well on our PopCultureCosmos.com website. So you want to check out PopCultureCosmos.com. But right now, we're a little bit ahead of that right here on the radio. So I want to talk to you right now about... In the 40s, my friend, we're in the 40s. So from 40 to 49, and we're going to start off with 49, The Breakfast Club. I'd get into some simple minds right now and start singing some simple minds, but I feel like I would be turning away our video audience and our also our podcast and radio audience at the same time. Yeah. No, but seriously, don't you forget about me. Oh, my gosh. You did go there. Yeah, no, okay. what was he doing the end of the movie? He yeah, puts it, his fist up in the air as he's it, walking away. Something like that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it was such an iconic movie at the time. It's not aged well at all, but for the time and period that it's in, it was such an iconic film, and uh, it's still remembered fondly today by many people. So, I can see forty nine on our list. It being right where I think that's probably a good place of where it belongs. It's right there. Not too high, not too low, right there, because it's remembered so fondly as one of the iconic films of the 1980s. It's a film that everybody talks about, film, you know, and John Hughes, he was he was on top of his game back then. Like, he was the Disney of the time, you know, or for non-Disney movies. He was, he was the, the 80s wrote, teenage filmmaker. Yeah, he wrote and directed everything from that era but breakfast club is one of those ones like you take a film class people talk about the breakfast club you talk about classic films and somebody is always going to say breakfast club it is something that i i would like to go back to one day but uh you know i just remember sitting there watching it the first time and though i wasn't in high school in that era it's kind of a nostalgic piece for me you know i just i enjoy watching it i enjoyed seeing what life was like back then and even today like we have the same stereotype as they did back then and i think that's why it's such an endearing film and that's the breakfast club at number 49 number 48 is the crow uh with the late brandon lee uh, i'm sure that you've heard over the years the tragedy that happened on the set of the crow but such a tragic ending could have been someone that right now we would have been talking about as a major superstar in the film industry but unfortunately with the crow and this performance was unfortunately his last and and just very sad to see how that transpired 
Yeah, you know, that's one that I bought. I do. I would like to watch it. I know there was a sequel. I hear that I should stay away from that one. So, yes, I will go watch The Crow one day. I would really like to see it. I just haven't done it yet. The original, yes, great. Don't watch the sequel. But The Crow with Brandon Lee is at number 48. Number 47 is The Great Outdoors, something that you are very fond of. I'm not as fond of it. I didn't think it was as funny as you did. But it has obviously resonated with enough people out there to be very high on the list. And it's in the top 50. So it's number 47 on your list. So tell me more about why you like The Great Outdoors. Well, this one's kind of a cheat for me because I grew up vacationing at the place where The Great Outdoors was filmed. It was filmed in Bass Lake, California, kind of right outside Yosemite, right outside Fresno. Besides me recognizing some of the landmarks in there, I love John Candy films. This is the quintessential John Candy. I mean, I've, some people will probably say differently, but John Candy plays the dad parts so well, and he is so funny in them. You know, even going back to like Home Alone, right? When he's in the van, like he is being the fatherly figure to Kevin's mom and that, that he just, he plays that part so well. And like Dan Aykroyd is is whatever in the movie but i i don't know it's just it's a movie that resonates really really well with me and you know i know a lot of people who will also like quote a lot of the parts from there you know like the part where they're at the diner eating the the big steak and the part with the bat on john candy's face like it's a very quotable movie i know a lot of people who really love it and it's something that it is one of my favorite films of all time and then you've got uncle buck as well he did a great job in that and uh something right, that uh, right a lot of same, people same type of part yeah a lot of people like that one as well so that is number 47 and that is the great outdoors number 46 on our countdown of the top 100 ish movie countdown that is going to be the matrix and the matrix is something that well we'll be seeing in a couple of years from now i believe in 2022 we talked about on last week's show it getting moved for matrix number four which we didn't even know would happen not even sure we wanted it to happen. I'm not even sure we think would happen after the next two movies in the line were not really that good. The Matrix still stands as an achievement in movie and cinema that is got to be seen to be believed. And the effects and all that, they've still hold up pretty good. I still enjoy the movie immensely, and I really think it's a wonderful film. What are your thoughts on The Matrix and number 46? Oh, I think it deserves to be there. It was it was cutting edge at the time. Like it was they were pushing not just, you know, special effects in ways that they've never been done before, but also storytelling. That was you know, they they really went to great lengths to really sell you into that world and you do, you feel it. You feel it like you're a part of that world. And uh, you know, I I experienced a full spectrum of emotions when I was watching that film. And I totally yes, it deserves to be on this list. You know, it's funny, like I've been seeing a lot of photos of old movies and, you know, I saw the part, you know, everyone, the bullet dodge, right? Like everyone wants to do slow motion after that. It feels very practical, you know, like as someone who does do some work with green screen stuff, like I I sat there, I'm like, oh, that is clever. You are not doing computer animation, like you are doing something practical, but you're just using the green screen to do it. And I think that's amazing. And that's at number 46. That is The Matrix. Number 45 is The Social Network, a movie that I saw in the theaters, thought was very good. Still holds up, obviously, with the fact that Facebook is still so much a part of our lives. In fact, it's part of Pop Culture Cosmos lives really well, especially if you go to Pop Culture Cosmos on Facebook. But I want to ask you this, my friend. As a movie, as a film, I really think it deserves a lot of praise. It did at the time and still does today as a great movie, and it's a number 45 film, The Social Network. I don't have the love for it that you do. You know, it's one of those ones to me. It was like, I'll watch it once or twice, but I don't. You know, it's not something I could watch over and over again, but it was very well done. You know, and it, it did kind of, I'm I'm curious how much of it is, is fact and how much was like dramatized, but it was a very well put together film. It's something that I do own, but obviously like you like it a lot. And I, I think that it's a good film. I don't think it's, you know, my favorite though. Number 44 is a different movie. It's something, actually, one of our biggest surprises on the entire top 100-ish movie countdown. And that is Yojimbo. Not the director, because that's Akira Kurosawa, who made some of the most monumental movies ever in film, including Magnificent Seven and Ron. 
I mean, he's inspired so many different directors over the years, including Spielberg and George Lucas, who pattern a lot of what he saw from Akira Kurosawa's work into what you see with Star Wars. But Yojimbo is one of the, I don't want to say lesser known stories, but one of the not as, well, I guess I will say the one, not as well known movies that are out there from Yojimbo. And I know you haven't seen Yojimbo yet, but knowing Akira Kurosawa's work as one of the greats and pioneers of filmmaking, I think it's nice to have at least some representation of Kurosawa's work on this list. Yeah, I, you know, just talking to you about it, it's going on my list. I've actually been marking movies down that I want to see, so I will see this. All right, well, there you go. That's Yojimbo, and that's number 44. Uh, just truly, again, from one of the finest directors ever, Akira Kurosawa. Number 43 is 2001 A Space Odyssey. And I, this one, I guess, I, I don't even need to explain it to a lot of people. It's just... And then all of a sudden going into Hal just controlling everything. It's, just such a, it's a creepy movie in many ways, but it's such a landmark film because of the imagery and and things that you saw in the film that hadn't been done any time before. And it's timeless movie because it's just become so memorable with so many things from the movie. And as far as how the music, the imagery, the whole nine yards, your thoughts on 2001, a space odyssey at number 43. So this is one I, I saw a really long time ago, you know, and I've, I have people always tell me like, you need to go back and rewatch it because you, you see things, you experience things differently you know, as an adult than you do as a kid or teenager. What I do remember from this one is a lot of, you know, like you said, the the imagery, the music, the creepiness, the eeriness of it all. But like watching Interstellar for some reason made me think about 2001, A Space Odyssey. Well, there you go. Again, that's number 43. That's 2001, A Space Odyssey. Again, such a landmark film. Stanley Kubrick, one of his finest Number 42 is City Lights with Charlie Chaplin, one of the great artists of the earlier part of the 20th century. I mean, Charlie Chaplin, just an iconic, iconic character as far as his, his movies. He, just, he entertained so many people in the earlier part of that century, and City Lights is obviously one of his finest works. So City Lights is at number 42. Number 41, that's going to be Heat and... That movie is one of the best bank robbery films of all time. Just a truly dynamic film in and of itself. Yes, it does get a little bit tit for tat, a little bit cheesy with De Niro and uh, you know Al Pacino just going at it, at it, and them going both into their shtick and spiel. But the movie itself, when it focuses on the the robberies, when it focuses on the action, especially that scene coming out of the bank. There is very few high-intensity scenes I've ever seen that can actually match up with it. It's just truly an outstanding imagery film. And I think it is, well, uh, the creator of Miami Vice, his films, his direction, I mean, this is probably his best work right there in Heat. This is another one I haven't seen, but I will go back and watch it. It is such a great film. Moody, the music, the imagery... It is something that if you're a fan of the work of Miami Vice, you're, you love that imagery, you love that style, this is a, some great work right there in Heat. And again, action personified. I love it when it goes ahead and focuses on all that. And it, it does, like I said, it shows the vantage point, not only the police that actually are investigating the string of robberies, but it also takes a look inside the lives of these criminals and how they're trying to go ahead and, and somewhat normalize their lives under these circumstances. So if you get a chance, check out Heat. And 40 is L.A. Confidential. And so I want to hear your thoughts, L.A. Confidential. I have not seen L.A. Confidential. I've, I always see it like at the store, and I see it playing on TV. Much like you know, I said with Usual Suspects, it's just something that was, by the time I had the chance to go back to it, I just wasn't interested anymore. But if it's made the list, then maybe it's something I should go back and watch. What it are your is thoughts? well. It's it's really a a great movie to watch, and I'll tell you what. It's something that I think a lot of people should check out. But I want to go ahead and add one more thing and do our countdown one more time for people out there. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Number forty nine, we got the Breakfast Club. Forty eight is the Crow. Forty seven is the Great Outdoors. Forty six is the Matrix. Forty five is the Social Network. 
44 is Yojimbo. 43 is 2001 A Space Odyssey. City Lights is at number 42. Heat is at number 41. And LA Confidential is at 40. Stay tuned with us next week because on next week's show, either the Pop Culture Cosmos or the PCC Multiverse, we're going to get into the 30s. Plus, you can see written descriptions of everything that we're going to be posting on the top 100-ish movie countdown coming up right on our website, popculturecosmos.com. Well, my friend, before we head on out, it's been great talking to you. I want to also thank John Griffin from Variety Digital Radio Australia for showing up on today's show and talking about all the great things that are going on in pop culture. But before we head on out, my friend, I want to go ahead and hit you up with this. The Undertaker, long-standing icon of wrestling, especially in the WWE, announced on the end of his docuseries, The Last Ride, that unless it's absolutely necessary, i.e. big payday in my opinion, that he is retiring from the sport as of this past WrestleMania when he had his tape match against AJ Styles and the graveyard match and all that stuff that they did there. Your thoughts on The Undertaker, if this is truly his last ride? My thoughts on The Undertaker. I I might be the wrong person to ask about this, man. I've not really followed wrestling in a long time, but you know he is one of the characters that when I did watch wrestling when I was in middle school, like I really was into he was you think about you know back then you thought about wrestling you thought about stone cold the rock the undertaker kane mick foley's mankind kurt angle he is one of the bigs you know and he's one that people will always remember and you know it would be sad to see him go but also like he's getting up there in age you know how you can't i can't really blame him for maybe wanting to step aside and you know stop potentially breaking his bones and you know he will be revered and not forgotten so this might be a good time for him to step down i disagree knowing the professional wrestling world like i do i know that virtually no one has been able to just walk away from the sport and with the, just a simple retirement i mean rick flair terry funk so many other great stars of, of that's been out there they just they never walk away they never really walk away they say they're retired and then you'll see them in a match uh, a few months, weeks, years later, you will see them in some type of match. And, you know, he left it open by saying in his interview in The Last Ride that it was, unless it's absolutely necessary, which to me, I think it will come to the absolutely necessary because Vince McMahon and the WWE will want to go ahead, especially in a platform of WrestleMania, if it becomes a live event again next year or the year after, where you can have... 50, 60, 70,000 people when you want to fill those seats, a great way to do so is by having the final match for The Undertaker, an announced final match. And obviously that would help him go out on a greater note in front of a a huge live audience, which I think is more what he deserves for his work, especially for all the years and win streak that he had in, in WrestleManias, and plus also the great contributions that he's made to the industry as well. Nobody who retires from wrestling is gone for good. You know, look at The Rock is still coming back. Stone Cold is still coming back. You know, nobody is ever gone for good. They've even brought Hulk Hogan back on a few rare occasions. So it's, it's, you get, nobody's gone for good. You know, if the paycheck's right, anybody will return to the arena. As Ted DiBiase said back when he was a character, money, money buys it all. Money buys you everything. Money gets you everything. So money, 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 money. But anyways, The Undertaker, as of right now, is he, he is retired, supposedly. What are your thoughts out there on The Undertaker? Do you think that he's actually officially retired, or do you think he'll return at some point to the ring? Share us your thoughts. Pop Culture Cosmos at Yahoo.com. My friend, it's been a great episode. I cannot thank you enough for joining us. Any last thoughts before we head on out? And next week, it's 200 episodes for the Pop Culture Cosmos. I think we covered it all. Happy Father's Day to all the, all the dads out there. And I hope you guys all had a great day. And thanks for listening. Thank you so much for listening. Again, just cannot thank you enough for being a part of it. Got to make sure and let everybody know out there, if you get a chance, check us out later this week on Friday when we drop our next episode of the PCC Multiverse covering the latest news and trends in pop culture. And again, just appreciate everyone watching and listening right here 
at the pop culture cosmos. So for Josh Peterson, this is Gerald Glassford. It's another beautiful day in paradise right here in the pop culture cosmos. We thank you for listening. And here's hoping you have yourself a great